The Britain Queen Elizabeth class carriers, despite their massive size and billions of pounds worth, are surprisingly lacking in their ability to defend themselves from anti-ship missile attacks. These mighty ships, weighing 65,000 tons and accommodating over 1,500 crew members, are only equipped with three Mark 15 Phalanx close-in weapon systems and four 30mm automated small-caliber guns. The installation of defensive missiles has actually been carried out by the Royal Navy on their aircraft carriers in the past. So, why isn't this done nowadays? The decades-old Phalanx close-in weapon systems is still a capable system in its upgraded form, particularly against traditional anti-ship cruise missiles and small unmanned aircraft. It can also engage smaller surface threats. However, it has a limited magazine depth and reach, making it unsuitable for defending carriers against higher-end supersonic and stealthy cruise missiles that are now proliferating around the world. This is especially true when it comes to defending against larger missile barges. In other words, the Phalanx close-in weapon systems are the absolute minimum of close-in defensive capability for any surface combatant. However, for a massive aircraft carrier, it is completely insufficient. For comparison, America's Nimitz-class supercarriers have three Phalanx systems, two rolling airframe missile launchers, and two evolved Sea Sparrow missile launchers. Even the Chinese Navy, a newcomer to the carrier game, has fitted three HQ-10 point defense missile systems to the Liaoning, which is essentially a trials and training platform, and the French Navy has fitted an Aster-15 to the Charles de Gaulle. The primary distinction between this armament and that found on the Queen Elizabeth class is that these vessels have their own layered air defense system that can operate independently of a larger carrier group and its integrated air warfare concept. Like the Queen Elizabeth class, all American flattops carry fighter aircraft capable of flying out and intercepting threats from a distance. The issue here is that these aircraft have limited air-to-air -air missile carrying capabilities, and hard-to-detect sea-skimming missiles can sneak by at high speeds. Furthermore, keeping patrols airborne at all times is unrealistic and possibly ineffective, especially if the potential vector of attack is unknown. In most cases, a pair of jets would be on full alert, but by the time they reach the air, they may be unable to make a significant impact on an anti-ship missile barrage. Aircraft carriers that use short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft, such as the F-35B, have fewer sorties than their catapult launch and barrier arrestment recovery counterparts. Short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft typically have significantly shorter ranges than their traditional fixed-wing counterparts, and in the case of the Queen Elizabeth class, where no aerial refueling capability is planned at this time, maintaining persistent or even semi-persistent combat air patrols is unlikely. There will always be Type 45 destroyers deployed to protect the Queen Elizabeth class. However, despite their capabilities, these ships are not completely reliable, even when deployed. Key mission systems fail and require maintenance, sometimes unexpectedly, leaving significant gaps in the carrier group's air warfare defensive umbrella. The Royal Navy's Type 23 frigates, which are outfitted with the Advanced Sea Scepter missile system, can provide more limited area air defense, however, their capabilities are not comparable to the Type 45 destroyers armed with Aster missiles. <coughs> Not to mention the Royal Navy's difficulty deploying ships, particularly the Type 45 destroyers. And this does not include the demands of supporting two groups of aircraft carriers with a small fleet of only six ships. Regardless of how many top-tier air defense picket ships can be assigned to a single carrier group, it's critical to understand that the enemy is unlikely to fire a single missile, let alone a handful, at the same time. A future anti-ship missile attack in a medium-to-high-threat combat environment would be multi-layered, utilizing multiple anti-ship systems at the same time, as well as possibly anti-ship ballistic missiles.
An aircraft carrier is the most important naval target for the enemy to pursue, both in terms of size and radar signature, as well as symbolism and military value. With this in mind, the Royal Navy's decision to rely solely on the phalanx for organic close-in-air defense is deeply concerning. At the very least, rolling airframe missile launchers should be added to the Queen Elizabeth class's onboard arsenal, along with an advanced electronic warfare suite if one is not already planned. Spending billions of pounds developing and building these ships, followed by billions more on aircraft to fly from their decks, but failing to spend a few million to provide adequate and proven defenses for Queen Elizabeth-class carriers is an ironic and worrying decision. The biggest question is, should the Queen Elizabeth-class be equipped with defensive missiles such as Sea Scepter? The short answer is yes, but the long answer is more complex than it appears. A rough estimate would be 25 million pounds per ship to install and integrate the system. And it does not include the purchase of additional missile stocks. The Queen Elizabeth class were designed to maximize the flight deck and hangar space available for aircraft and there is no internal space earmarked for missile silos. Fitting defensive missiles such as Sea Scepter would probably involve adding the silos, one each side on the edge of the flight deck. Missiles designed to respond in seconds to defend against supersonic threats must be largely automated, so the system must include a strong identification friend or foe system to ensure that the carrier's own aircraft are not engaged. Flight paths around the carrier must be designed to avoid missile arcs. The installation of defensive missiles has actually been carried out by the Royal Navy. The old carrier HMS Hermes was outfitted with a SeaCat GWS-22 point defense missile system. Even the Invincible class carriers, which came before the Queen Elizabeth class, were originally equipped with the GWS-30 Sea Dart, which was designed to defend against high and medium altitude air attacks. Historically. The Royal Navy clearly saw the benefit of installing defensive missiles on aircraft carriers. 